Leif and I are heading into the rendezvous, Mille Lacs History Fest and Rendezvous. We're out here on Red Road, south of Isle. Trappers, traders, and artisans too. Come see them all at the rendezvous. There's two of us. And how many of you are 10 years or younger? Uh, none of us, unless you you're, count the dog. You're 11 years old? Yeah. Well, you're just in luck to purchase two of these wooden round dingies with a number on them. This beaver, when it was trapped, generally the traps were kept underwater to protect the bird. And instead, uh, somebody messed with the trap. Oh. And so the beaver was on top of the water when the trapper went to get it. So when I started to clean up the inside, the hair slipped out the outside. So rather than wasting the baking leather out of the whole thing. Okay. And you've made how many canoes like this? I just started the 300th one, so I made 2 r 99 and number 300 is, is going to be done next week. Yeah. And you're saying this is what kind of wood? This is white cedar. Mm -hmm. And this grows natural here in northern Minnesota. Uh-huh. What I'm doing is I'm splitting it for the ribs and the lining on the inside of the canoe. Mm -hmm. The ribs go from side to side in the canoe and the lining goes lengthwise underneath. Yeah. And so the heartwood, the center tree is dry and stiff, makes good ribs, holds the shape of the canoe. And uh, the lining comes from the sapwood of the tree, which is more flexible and split thin easier. So I can get thin layers for going lengthways in the canoe then. Yeah. And all the sewing here is done with roots from a black spruce tree. Yeah. And it takes about 500 feet of root to do a canoe this size. Wow. And of course the outside is birch bark is where it gets its name as a birch bark canoe. Uh-huh. And you see a canoe is yellow instead of white. Because the best I can explain is that the white side is waterproof. The okay. canoe needs to be wet to be strong. So you turn the bark inside out, and the yellow side will soak the water up and makes it flexible when it hits rock and rapids instead of cracking. Yeah. And you sell them all around the country? Yes, I got five going out to Pennsylvania this next, I guess, in, by the end of August. I have five out there. And we sold them in Texas and Florida, California, all over the United States, and some in Canada. All right. I've even got some scale model ones that went to Japan and one went to Germany. So. All right. Well, thanks, Ray. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Okay. This is the measure right here. Uh huh. Okay. Now the powder is a double F rifle powder, black powder. Uh huh. The, uh, this is the measure for the rifle. It, uh, this particular rifle, I usually use about 60 grains of black powder. Okay. And uh, along with the uh, black powder, after I uh, charge the rifle with uh, powder, I use uh, a 15,000th patch that I seat on a uh, 45 caliber round ball. Okay. Okay. And once I do that, then I put the powder down the barrel, mm -hmm. put the patch, and then the ball. Mm -hmm. After doing that, I ram it down with a rifle. Mm -hmm. Put it down and seat it. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, your charge is put into the barrel. Uh -huh. Then what you want to do is you cap your nipple down here. And in doing so, you use a percussion cap right in here. You slip onto the nipple. Uh -huh. Then your weapon's fully loaded. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen my traps over here. No. Traps that were used, they date back to 
the dawn of time. Uh -huh. All that works. You would set this up on a game trail mm -hmm. for a run, or you can make an enclosure. It could be on either side of it. You'd have a bait back in the enclosure or on the stick, or a trigger stick. If you was on a game trail, you would get an obstruction through here and through here. Mm -hmm. So the animal is, is the most obvious place to go through there. And they hit, they come in there, they hit the trigger stick. Yeah. <laughs> Lights out. Boy, is Pretty good. Whoops. Really? Okay. Make uh, uh, strikers. Like uh, flint and steel with strikers. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Make these here forks. Uh huh. Lots of heating for like a hot dog. Sure. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, cook sets like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't do pencils. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And how about you? Do you make any of these crafts here too? Or? Uh, yes. I crochet. I do against the wall and my mouth underneath the spout with my feet up against the wall and my mouth underneath the spout and do you make some of these crafts or yep i make the ticklers for the irish drum uh, oh yeah nice stuff and what how, what are those used for you hit the drum with them yep that's these? Uh-huh. Whoops. Thank you. Tell me your names again. Will Hallnagel. Hank Exel. Thanks a lot.